I sat back waiting, anticipating at some point change would begin. Then it hit me, I was what was missing. My weight was dead, that's why we couldn't move ahead. But no more delays It all ends today It don't have to be so heavy If you pull your weight You and I Are the ones we've been waiting for you and I Thought this was somebody else's war You and I Are the ones The ones we've been waiting for Goodbye, a promise Just hope change is coming Well, hope alone Won't bring about that change Heartbeat, God's hands and God's feet. God in the flesh, let's bless for steam ahead. So no more it all can end today. It don't gotta be so heavy. And I say a loud resounding cease to play las personas que están esperando Sí, se puede Welcome to Middle Church. We're glad you're here. Aquaba. Bienvenidos a la Iglesia del Middle. Welcome to Middle. Welcome, Welcome to, to Middle, middle Church. What are you doing, Lele? Middle Church. Welcome home.
Hey everybody, welcome home. We're here in New York, uh, where I'm recording. It's September 15th. It is our homecoming Sunday worship. And no matter where you are in the country, we're glad you're here. No matter where you are around the globe, we hope you found this link and you have settled in someplace and that you are gonna worship with us and enjoy the beautiful music and all the great things we have planned for today. So I'm Jackie Lewis, my pronouns are she, her, hers. Welcome to Middle Church. Take a deep breath with me. And let us worship God. Welcome. It's a special Sunday, um, and I'm recognizing that some of you might not know who I am, so we're going to fix that today. So first of all, <laughs> could someone, does this face look familiar to anyone? Who is this young person? Could I, you, could, could you be my designated mic person? Who is this young person? You. Me? What gave it away? Oh my gosh. Yes, this is me. This is me in my backyard in Michigan when I was, I don't, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know how old I was, but you can see I was cool. I still am. Um, I, I love to swing. I love my backyard. You can see my brother's feet there. Uh, I did crop him out of the photo, but we were playing together. I had a pretty, I was a pretty fun kid. Um, 
And since I'm new here, I wanted to show you both this picture of me from when I was a young person. And I also went deep in the archives. And I found my diary from when I was eight years old. And um, there's some juicy details in here, but I highlighted a few pages. Um, I went camping as a Girl Scout. Look at that artistic skill. I was a kid who loved camping. I was a kid who, um, this is a picture of my friend Carly in our, in our church play. She has really big feet, but she was Mary in our church play. Um, and I was there supporting her, and I'm skipping through some of the more boring to show you. Look at, look at me playing guitar. I learned how to play guitar when I was eight years old. I guess what I'm saying is I, I, I think I had a little bit of a personality when I was a kid. I had a full life, actually. I went to plays. I supported my friends. I hung out on the swing set. I played guitar. I had so many passions, and I had such a full life, and I think if I hadn't recorded it in that diary, as an adult, as a grown-up, I would have been like, oh yeah, I was just a kid, I didn't do very much. But in reality, I, had a, I was doing a ton of things. And I think that sometimes grown-ups, like me, like our wonderful family here at Middle, can forget that kids have really awesome lives. You guys have passions, right? You have things you like doing. You have friends. You have goals. You have dreams. Can I get big nods? Yes. That's what I thought. Um, and I would bet that there are some grown-ups in your life who don't even, you know, know that you have some of these dreams. So I was thinking about how today is a special Sunday just for young people. And while I'm no longer this young person, I was thinking about how Jesus, who was a great teacher and also a great friend to children, uh, reminds us that the dreams of young people are important. In the story that I think Brian is going to share today, um, Jesus is, is sitting around, he's doing kind of this thing that I'm doing, and a bunch of young people try to come up to him. And Jesus' disciples, his friends, say, whoa, 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 back off, kids. Like, this isn't kid time. And Jesus gets a little frustrated with them. And Jesus says, let the children come to me. Don't hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to these children. Truly, I tell you that anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God, like these children, will not enter it. And then Jesus took the children, he put them in his arms, and he blessed them, whatever that meant for them. Um, so the point that Jesus makes in this story is that young people, children, like you, literally have messages that adults need to hear. What you do and who you are helps adults to be better people. Yes. So, since I have some fabulous children in front of me, I was wondering, could you guys offer at least three pieces of advice that you would give the adults in this room? What should adults learn from you? You have, you have it. Yeah? Go for it, Maya. Fun. You should have fun. <laughs> all right, all right. That's, that's hot. I love it. What else, what else should, should adults know from you? Yeah. Stop discriminating against kids. Whoa! Whoa! We have opinions. We have opinions. We have knowledge. We are people, too. Yeah, you are! I have chills. Can I get one more? What else, what else do adults need to learn? Be brutally honest. That too? Anyone else? One more, Maya? No boys. No boys? And you know what? You're right, Maya. This world has one too many bullies, and if we can teach adults that bullies don't have a place in this world, by your example, I think we are set up for a very good future. So this is just for the young folks. I, I, I usually try to include the young in heart, but right now I have, I have something that I would love to do with young folks. This is our chance to get a little loud because we have opinions, right? And setting up for some good energy for Brian's sermon here. So if you want to repeat after me, and I want you to do it at the volume that you feel in your heart, okay? So repeat after me. Hey, grown-ups. Hey, grown-ups. 
Thank you for helping us enjoy all our favorite things. Thank you for helping us enjoy all of our favorite things. But please remember. But please remember. We have important messages to share. We have important messages to share. And that in, and that in every one of us. And that in every one of us. There's a child that wants to be free and explore. There's a child that wants to be free and explore. Will you support us and listen to us? you support us and listen to us? And congregation, what do you say? Yeah! We're going to see a humble back to our seats. This is the time in our worship celebration when we lift our prayers up to God. We know that when we bear one another's burdens, our burdens are lighter. And we understand also that when we share one another's joys, our joys are multiplied. I'm thinking about you today and thinking about the just love that drives our community. It is in that spirit, in that spirit of just love, that we invite you to take a deep breath. Think of all the beautiful ways that God shows up in your life. And let us pray together. I'm beginning to imagine that out of these ashes, out of our grief, something is going to emerge. How am I going to get myself back home? Hi, hi, that will surprise hi. us and delight us. How am I going to get myself back home? Hi, hi, hi. We are the lost people standing at the end of the night. We are the greatest pretenders. Hours later, a skeleton is all that remains of the historic church. This is just another night. And we've had many of them to the morning we're cast out. Middle Collegiate Church, it's been uh, about a year now, yep. had a devastating fire, 120-year-old church. You described it this way, our dreams just burned up. Something about the way we'll be church together. Something about the way we'll rebuild, the way we'll make more space. Something about the way we'll be able to make a space for children to learn in a freedom school and adults to gather and the community to be a center and art to happen and love to flow. How am I gonna get myself back home?
place where just love is enacted, a place where grief and dance, justice and play, righteous indignation and joy will all commingle, a place where all of our multi-everythingness will not only survive, but thrive. I'm beginning to feel the beginnings of that. If you would rise in body and or spirit and join me in the Lord's Prayer that's in your bulletin in an all-inclusive version, but we invite you to use the version that you know best and the language that you know best. Ever-loving and holy God, hallowed be your name. Your reign come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the reign, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. the peace amongst each other, not forgetting our online people in about 40 seconds. <laughs> peace be with you, Middle. Reverend Natalie here with your pop on from Minneapolis. <gasps> Special shout out to Carrie, Paul, and Corinna for making time to say hi while I was here. Peace be with you. Uh, don't forget your, to join our community huddle right after the 3 p.m. worship. We'll just keep streaming. Ask your questions in the chat and we'll get them asked in the room. And were you able to join Defeating Project 2025 by voting Just Love this past Tuesday? There are three more opportunities to join. Head to our website to register or email Reverend Amanda for details. And Pray to Rise starts right back up this Wednesday at 8 a.m. with me and Jillian. Head to our website for more info and to register. At our 3 p.m. worship today, there's a special Zoom link to pass the piece live with other online folks with, and with those in Judson. Check the link in the chat to join. And that's all for now, family. Let's get right back into passing the peace. Hello everybody out there in the world. We wish you peace and we wish you love. So much peace, so much joy. Mwah. For all of the Leute in Deutschland, ich wünsch dir was. Liebe überall. Ciao. Peace, middle fam.
family. Jackie here. I'm so glad <laughs> to be back. I mean, you know, sometimes you take some time off and you feel resentful and like, well, I'm not ready to go. But I had a beautiful vacation time. Just a great, mostly staycation here in my house with John, getting in the hot tub, playing cards, going for walks, reading a zillion books. I read five books in five weeks, playing with our grandbabies. Uh, we took them to the beach with their parents for about 10 days. And I feel breathy and happy and ready to be back at work in this beautiful place called Middle Church. So I hope you had a chance to take some time off. I hope you are being okay, no matter what the world's doing, that inside you, you can feel some peace and some kindness towards yourself, uh, some joy that you insist on having as a part of the resistance. I hope you are paying attention to the news, uh, paying attention to these critical times, but also knowing that in the middle of all of it, love is what matters most for all of us. So that's my wish and hope and prayer for you 
Uh, let me just read the scripture that we're looking at today. It's Mark's Gospel, chapter 9, and I'm reading verses 30 to uh, 41. Usually we're in the NRSV version, and that might be what's on the screen, but I'm reading this from the NIV version. I just a little bit different today. Listen to the Word of God. Jesus went on with his disciples from there and passed through Galilee. He didn't want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, the Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands. They will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they didn't understand what he was saying, and they were afraid to ask him. When they came to Capernaum, when he was in the house, he asked them, what were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent. For on the way, they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be the first must be the last of all and the servant of all. Then he took a little child and put the child among them. And taking them into his arms, he said to the disciples, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. And John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. I mean, Whoever does a good deed in my name, a deed of power in my name, won't soon be able to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. This is a word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Whenever you watch this homily, whenever you worship and think about these words, you'll be in a context, in a time, in a place, in the middle of your story. I'm preaching this homily at a time and a place in my story where we've all just watched the presidential debate. We've all, we've all in America, in this United States of America, and maybe wherever you were, watched Kamala Harris and Donald Trump dance with each other on a stage. The contrast between the two leaders was stark to me. I think if I had my eyes blindfolded and didn't know who they were, listening to one be clear and consistent and straightforward but sharp, listening to the other be kind of mean and disrespectful, and dare I say, kind of on the fight, uh, in this context, in this particular time, in my life, as an African-American woman working in a world, working in a church, working in so many contexts that are led by, formed by, shaped by white men, my body was just like, wow, I almost turned the channel. In my context, in my life, I grew up in a family where we're not all Democrat. I am. We're not all Democratic. We didn't all vote for Obama. I did. <laughs> we're, we're not all Democratic. We didn't all vote for Hillary Clinton. I, I did. We are diverse in our political ideologies, and we're diverse in my family and our theology. Some of us very conservative, and some of us like me, so left I can meet myself coming and going. But in my particular context, Republican or Democrat, the behaviors in the public square I, I, I don't know what to say. 
about the mean, the, the nasty, the critical, the bullying, the beating down. Not about issues, but about personality. Not about um, policy, but about, frankly, just racism, uh, authoritarianism. It hurts my feelings the way some of these conversations go. It stuns me the way there are not norms of politeness, of generosity, of listening deeply before you fight, speak, just conversational etiquette, a public ethic of love is just missing. And so when I read today's text, I'm thinking about the household that is the oikon, the economy, the Greek is oikon, of God. I'm thinking about the rules of engagement, the ways we're, we're called into being together as people who say we follow Jesus. And this text right here, this text in Mark's gospel, Jesus is you know, on the way to the end of his ministry, on the way to the end of his life, on the way to what he knows will happen. He tells us in this text that, that the folks are going to kill him. And he's saying in this text, in a way that the disciples don't get, but I'm going to rise again, so death won't be the last word, but it's coming. The torture is coming. The punishment is coming. The derision is coming. The mocking is coming. The violence is coming. And in that context, in that context, in that part of Jesus' story, he's saying, um, first of all, if you want to be great, if you want to be the one in charge, there's a, a flipping of the norms. You who want to be great must be last and must be a servant to the rest of the folk. And if you wanted to know what the rules are for this household, for this economy, for this culture, here's this kid, this one, when you welcome this child, when you welcome this child, you welcome me, your teacher, your rabbi. And when you welcome me, you welcome the one who sent me, which is our God, our Abba, our, our Abwum, I've said before, our, our father, mother, God. You welcome that one. Welcoming the most vulnerable, the least of us, the one who has no vote, the one who has no voice, the one who is dependent on the rest of us to take care of them, this one. You welcome this one. You welcome me. You welcome the God who sent me. The staff and I spent some time together uh, just as I got back from vacation earlier this week. We, they came to my house out here in New Jersey, um, and we sat around tables inside and outside talking about the culture that we want to make. What is the culture that we want to have in this place? What do we want middle? What do we want middle's economy, middle's household to be? And we talked about rules of engagement, norms, listening deeply to one another, being a, a cabinet together, a pooling, crowdsourcing, let's say, our wisdom, and, and the staff giving, giving me their very best wisdom, counsel, so that I can make decisions. We talked candidly about what it means to be a team that is this wildly diverse, uh, with trans and non-binary and queer, gay, lesbian, straight, bisexual, African-American, white, Hispanic, folk. 
how do we do this? How do we honor each other's differences? How do we build a culture that's big enough and humble enough, uh, ambitious enough and gentle enough, kind enough and honest enough so that what we're making is a space not only for us, but for you, family, for you to come just as you are into our spaces, whether it's physical or digital, and feel welcomed, feel seen and heard and loved. We understand that we are your servants, your servant leaders, here to set a table for you, here to make sure that you get the spiritual resources that you need, that you get equipped to be a theologian in residence in your own life, that you want to be here, that you come home to Middle Church and find yourself in a home that works, an economy that works. We say this in the context of our story, where we are in this story, where there is still, still a devastating, war crime laden violence in Gaza, where still we will fight each other about whether we're going to say the word genocide or not, but not able to solve the violence, not able to have a ceasefire, not able to think about a two-state solution, not able to get the hostages, all the hostages, the Israeli hostages and the Palestinian hostages, home to the people who love them. We've not been able to, in this context of our shared story, get to peace there or peace in Ukraine or peace in Congo or Sudan uh, or Haiti or Afghanistan or Detroit <laughs> or the Bronx, where the economy, the household rules aren't nearly loving enough, aren't nearly kind enough, aren't really valuing of humanity and all our diversity, not really celebrating, not tolerating, but celebrating the incredible breadth of human sexuality, not, not nearly enough compassion, not nearly enough truth telling, not nearly enough understanding that we are each other's people and we've got to have each other's backs. No. The norms of the greater world, the greater culture, the, the way it rolls, the way it goes, me and mine against you and yours, name calling rather than honest debate, a sense of there being enough for everybody and sharing what we have to make sure that that's true. This is the pocket of resistance. This is the kingdom pocket of resistance, to quote my colleague Brian Blunt, that we at Middle Church want to be making for you and with you. Your staff, your team, your board, your leaders want a covenant in which we all get to flourish, in which we all are seen and known and loved and valued, where we get to come just as we are inside the space and feel welcome, but also feel encouraged to be transformed. That the middle is a pocket of resistance and a transformational box. Like I came this way, lonely, worried, angry, you know, fragile. I came hurting and hurt people hurt people. And I'm stretching out my chest and I'm becoming gentler and I'm telling more truth to myself about myself. I'm more willing to engage, I'm less afraid. You know, our humanity and all that comes with it, just entering into the space and being so loved, so profoundly loved by God and each other that actually we are changed. That home, this home, the home that is Middle Church, in this house, we welcome each other and expect each other to be on a journey, to, to better relating, to more wholeness, to even fiercer love. I'm reading this text in the arc of my story. 
I'm saying these words to you, my friends, in the context of American politics and geopolitical violence and fear and anxiety and worry. And I'm saying these words in the context of my story, which also includes this house, this economy, middle church, spaceless, mourning the loss of our sacred site, on the road in the wilderness, but, but full of love for each other, making a container of love for each other, making a way out of no way for each other, welcoming new New Yorkers, teaching our children that they are love warriors in our Freedom Rising School, being a welcoming, flourishing place for queer and trans people and their families, knowing for sure that our call to value Black lives is a call to value all the lives, being led by women, yes, led by women, two of them Black, and loving that, loving the uniqueness of what that means, being full of all of the cultures, Japanese, Chinese, Filipino, um, Puerto Rican, Dominican, New Yorkian, African and African diaspora, all the white flavors from Ukrainian to Dutch to I'm not sure. And in this month, we're just especially noticing the Hispanics, the Latinx, the Spanish speaking people who come from my diaspora, whose heritage we're celebrating this month. En este casa. En este casa. En esta casa. In this house. Te amo. In this house. Bienvenido. In this house, you are welcome, you are loved, you are seen, you are needed, your gifts are celebrated. In this house, you are welcome to bring all of you, your story, your dreams, your hopes, your disappointments, your superpowers, and your prickly bits. And together, together we'll work to have an economy, a household in which all of us take turns being first and take turns being last. And we hold hands and walk toward a better world together. Welcome home. No matter where you are, you are loved by the one who calls us to welcome the little one. Amen. Now, this is the time in our worship celebration when we invite you to join the movement. And I'm so proud of all of you who have made an invitation over time. Uh, this is a beautiful compilation of Join the Movement. Uh, the people of God inviting you to be a part of this movement. Look. Middle Church is a place where we refill ourselves. With its radical vision of all-inclusive, revolutionary, fierce love that compels us to seek justice in this world. We believe that we are called uh, by God for revolutionary love. Just as you are, as you came through that door, we welcome you. 
Middle was one of the first places I heard someone say to me that you are enough. Your black queer self is exactly what God wants in the world. But I didn't know that this body in transition could be holy until I came to Middle. Where else but Middle Church, where everyone is welcome and everyone is seen in all of their glorious, messy, intersectional, divine humanness. I had to, you know, explain to my family, well, Dory, why are you joining a church? You're not Christian. And I said, well, you know, at this church, God is really the stick that holds up the placard that we're all carrying at the protests. Even only being online, the relationships we have been able to build are so wonderful and so enriching and life-giving. I'm pretty sure I cried like at least every service for the first six months that we went to because I just couldn't believe that there was a faith community um, that exists like Middle. Middle has been such a formative part of my own personal and professional journey and I wouldn't be where I am today without the inspiration and the love and the community that I found at Middle. It's been the place where I've been able to grow spiritually and emotionally. Participating in revolutionary parenting, attending anti-racism classes, Middle Out Loud, as well as the young adult small group. It's been such a life-giving experience to be part of the choir. Standing up for women, black lives, trans lives, mama earth, and voting rights healing the world on the ground and in digital spaces. This is my kind of church. Being a part of Middle means being part of the work of love. We need you. We need you because you empower the love, you empower the justice in our community. We can't do it without your help. This love has to be shouted from every rooftop, shared in every form of social media. So if we are thinking about joining Middle, just go to middlechurch.org. Join me. Join the movement. Join us country to country, coast to coast. Join the movement to serve our God called love. I found my home. I don't know where we would be without Middle Church. There are many ways to step in, step up, to get involved, to be a part of this beloved community. So if you have been dating us, you should think about joining us. You don't have to get married, you can just move in. Shack up together, it's all good. <laughs> all you have to do is go to the website, middlechurch.org, and indicate your desire to join us. Come be a part of this. Join us, give your gifts of time and talent, and yes, money makes it happen. For we are Middle Collegiate Church, and we love you.
we can build a beautiful city yes we can yes we can we can build a beautiful city not a city of angels but we can build a city of men when your trust is all but shattered when your faith is all but killed you can give up bitter and battered or you can slowly start to build a beautiful city yes we can yes we can we can build a beautiful city not a city of angels but finally Amen, 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 amen. God, we thank you so much for these gifts. We thank you for all who have given, all who had purposed in their hearts to give. Bless these gifts. May they be used for your greater glory. We ask all this in your many names. Amen. Amen. When I think of home, I think of a place where there Love overflowing I wish I was home I wish I was back there With the things I've been knowing When that makes the tall trees Bend into leaning Suddenly the snowflakes They fall a chance for me to go back now that I have some direction it would sure be nice to be back at home where there's love and affection and just
say to you is we actually each of us and collectively are the church I think the question becomes what kind of church do we want to be who do we want to be and I know you know we want to be the people who welcome the people right no matter who they love and how they look we want to be the people working for economic justice we want to work for a woman's right to choose yes we do we want to work for a place where trans and gay and non-binary and queer friends are all welcome everywhere. We want to work for a time and a way in which my black life and my grandchildren's black lives and my cousin and them's black lives matter. And we want to be the kind of church where the Muslims are welcome. And the Jews too, and the Buddhists, and the atheists. Why? Because God loves all of them. And we're the church. So I'm inviting you to take seriously your vocation as being God's temple. Love yourself well so you can love your people well. Increase your tribe and know that all the people are your people. Love the world with your holiest imagination. No holes barred. The fiercest kind of love possible. Because a room is not a house. And a house is not a home. Until you make it one. I love you. Okay, let's bless each other, church. Everybody raise your hand. Say you are the place the God lives. You are the temple of the Almighty. You are the repository for the fiercest love. Go in the world and make love everywhere. <laughs> Woo!